Welcome! In this video, I'll show you how to solve the radial equation for a potential equal to zero. Now, this is, of course, easier um, than solving the hydrogen atom, right, which is a different potential, um, but it's nevertheless still rather difficult. And the solution to this, as we'll see, will be Bessel equations of the one half, right, of one half order, and we'll find both of the first and second kind, functions of the first and second kind. Um, but we'll get to all of that. So since we are in the radial equation for the potential equals zero, this thing right here will be zero, right? And it's very important to know how to do this because um, this is the Bessel equation that we will get to appears a lot whenever we have spherical symmetry. So um, let's now just get rid of this. So the potential is equal to zero. And let's now multiply through. So uh, in some books, they recommend going to a variable u, which is r times r, and that can be very useful. Um, but in this particular equation, I think it's better not to do that. And I'll show you how I like to solve it, which I think is a bit more intuitive. Um, so it is because I like to solve the Bessel equation instead. So let's now derive this. So by deriving, we get 2r dr dr plus r squared d squared r dr squared, right? We simply applied um, the product rule. Then we have plus 2me divided by h bar squared times r squared times r function r. But we can simply go ahead and call this k squared, right? We can define, I'm going to leave it here for later in case we need it. k squared is 2me over h bar squared. And that way we don't have to be writing down all those nasty constants. And besides, we are kind of used to having this k squared at this point. And finally, we have um, this thing here. So actually, we, let's write it to the left hand side. So minus l, l plus 1 and times r is equal to 0. So we can here factor out r and leave it like this. There we go. Now, this is almost what we call the spherical Bessel equation. Um, but there is a slight difference. So we still have this annoying k times r. So what we will do now is we will define x as being k times r. And that means that dx will be simply k times dr. So for that reason, here and here, so we will get r, which is x over k. Um, so let's plug it in. So we get 2 times x over k and dr dr. This will give us... Um, so dr dx, but dr is dx over k, so we get a k multiplying. So that means that in this term, the k's cancel out. Then we get plus r squared here, which will be x squared over k squared times now the second derivative, or rather deriving twice. So that means that we will get 2, or basically k twice, right? So k squared dx. So again, the k's cancel out here. And then we have plus x squared minus l, l plus 1, r equals 0. So there we go. Now this, right, is what we call the spherical Bessel equation. Um, but we are still not quite there, so we still would like to um, find some way to solve this, because solving this is not easy. So in order to solve the spherical Bessel equation, right, the spherical Bessel equation, what we want to do is transform it to the regular Bessel equation. So um, let's do that. So. In order for us to do that, we will now use um, a change of variables. Now, if you don't know what the Bessel equation is, then you are not going to come up with this uh, with this trick, because this trick relies on you already knowing the Bessel equation. 
Um, but don't worry, I mean, this is something that goes beyond the scope of this Quantum Mechanics 1 course, um, so it is okay if you don't understand every, every single thing. Um, the Bessel Equation is something that you're probably just now getting to know, um, so don't worry if some of this looks unintuitive. Okay, as you will get to learn more about the Bessel Equation and, and its functions, um, you will get to do this better. So we will use the change of variables, um, z, that of course depend on x, um, so, basically, so the other way, so r, which is what we have now, will be zx times x t minus one half. So that is the change of variables that we will use. Thus, r prime will be z prime, right? Prime, of course, denoting derivatives. So r prime will be z prime x to the minus one half plus z times minus one half x to the minus three halves. Now let's apply another derivative. So we get r prime prime, which will be from here, z prime prime, x to the minus one half, plus, now deriving this again, here we get uh, minus one half, just as before, x to the minus three halves times z. I kind of flipped it around, but it doesn't matter. And now we need to derive this. So we get minus one half, which is already there, z prime, and let's see, oh, this is set prime, by the way, because it was already derived. And then we have x to the minus 3 halves, we didn't do anything to it. And finally, we have this minus 1 half, but since we are going to derive this, we get another minus, and 3 halves. So we get plus 3 over 4, z, x to the minus 5 halves. And this we can simplify just a little bit, so r prime prime. This is equal to, let's factor out, x minus one half, and then we get z prime prime, and we can put these two together, so we get minus z prime x to the minus one, plus three over four z to the x minus two. There we go. So let's plug all of that into our spherical Bessel equation. So we get two times x, and now this will multiply r prime. And r prime is z prime x to the minus one half plus actually minus one half z to the x minus three halves. Um, yeah, I didn't forget anything, no. Then we have plus x squared, and now the second derivative, I just realized that I forgot to write this squared there, but of course it doesn't matter much. Um, then, let's see, plug this in, so we get x to the minus one half factor of z prime prime minus z prime x to the minus one plus three over four z x to the minus two. And then we have the rest, so then we have plus x squared minus l, l plus one, and then x to the minus one half z equals zero. And now the point of this whole substitution, it might look worse, but notice that every single term is multiplied by x to the minus one half. We can factor out from here x to the minus one half, and so we get rid of that, and this becomes x to the minus one. And now we have x to the minus one half here, here, and here. So we can multiply by x to the one half, so they cancel out. Okay, now let's multiply through in each one of these parentheses. So we get, and let's of course group up uh, by order of derivative. So we get x squared z prime prime, and then everything with z prime. So we have 2x here, and we have this, so minus... Um, it is x to the minus 1, but it's multiplied by x squared. So we get minus x. So simply x. So we basically have plus x z prime. And what else? Um, then we have everything with z. So everything with z would be um, here we have minus 1 half times 2, so minus 1, x to the minus 1 times x. So 1, so we get minus 1. 
Then we have this thing, which is three quarters, right? The x minus two cancels out. And then we have this thing. So plus x squared minus l, l plus one equals zero. Okay. So this thing is simply minus one quarter. So minus one over four. And we can now restore the notation. So let's write it as dz squared, even though it doesn't matter. I want to do this so that it looks more like what we had before. So dz dx x plus z. And now notice what we have here. So this is um, x squared minus l squared plus 2l plus 1 over 4, right? I took all the minus signs outside. And this thing right here is simply L plus one half squared. So I can rewrite this as L plus one half squared. And this is zero. It, it looks like a six. It's not a six. It's zero. Okay. So after doing that, take a look at what we have. This thing right here is precisely the Bessel equation. All right, so that is precisely the Bessel equation. And not only that, but it is for the case where nu is equal to L plus one half, right? Um, because as we know, this is nu squared. So nu is L plus one half. So that means that this is the Bessel equation of order right? One half. It will be one half or three halves or five halves. So it is of semi-integer order. I've already made a video about how to solve the Bessel equation. So if you're interested, I do recommend that you go to my other video, which I will link right here, and you solve this, and then you come back so that we use the result. So now I'm assuming that you already watched it, so you know what the result is. So once we find the solution for the Bessel equation, right, uh, we have to keep in mind that that was not really our goal. We wanted to find the solution for the spherical Bessel equation. So we need to use or undo our substitution, right? This R of x, which we called z of x, x to the minus one half. So considering that the solution that we found for the Bessel equation is some constant times the Bessel function of the first kind plus b times some other constant times the Bessel function of second kind, right? It is a linear combination of both of them. Um, then our function r, and we can undo our substitution because we had used um, that x was kr. So we can now undo it. So we get, instead of z, of course, we write on this, so we get a first uh, B uh, Bessel function times B, second Bessel function KR, and we need to multiply all of this by X to the minus one half, which is basically the square root of X, but X is KR. So K and R. And this is in principle already like two valid versions of the answer. Um, however, there, there are books like in Griffiths where you sometimes use the version u is equal to r times r. So if that is the case, I'm going to show you what that result is. So we simply plug everything in and we find that u as a function of r, of course, will be r times this. So what Griffiths does is that he calls this the spherical Bessel function. So and this we can call small j of nu and this we can call small j of minus nu. So by doing that, we get a times r times the Bessel function of the first kind plus b and then r j minus nu, right? The Neumann function. And of course, all of these evaluated at kr. Kr. Um, so there we go. This is another way to write this function. So just to make sure that in there is kr. I'm going to write it a little bit neater. There we go. So this is how you solve the spherical Bessel function, which, as I've mentioned, comes out um, quite naturally whenever we are dealing with 
potentials with spherical symmetry. So I hope this was useful to you. If it was, please consider leaving a like on the video, commenting and subscribing, and maybe check out my Patreon. Um, so your support there would really help me out and, you know, just allow me to continue pumping out videos. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.